Scott Collins made a very nice video showing four shortcomings of the DM42. And I want to go through those four shortcomings on the C47 to see how it compares. So I put a link to Scott's video in my comments. Um, feel free to take a look at that. But otherwise, let's jump right into it. So the first shortcoming is that the DM42 does not offer a quadratic equation solver. So let's see how we solve a quadratic equation on the C47 calculator. First, we just enter the A, B, and C coefficients onto the stack. So for this problem, we do 3 enter, 7 enter, 3 negative enter. Then we go to the advanced menu, and on the F2, there, F2 key, there's a solve quadratic. We press that, and we have the answer. So very easy to solve a quadratic equation on the C47. All right, let's return to the home menu, clear the stack. Problem two, this is out of order for Scott's video, but problem two is to solve a cubic polynomial equation. And I'm just jumping to this because it's so similar. So in this case, a little bit longer equation, but we just enter the coefficients again onto the stack. So one enter, 15 negative, enter, 71, enter, and 105 negative, enter. Again, under the advanced menu, and this time it's a shift on the F2 key, solve cubic polynomial, and we get the answer, three, five, and seven. All right, so let's return back to the home menu, clear the stack, and now these next two are gonna get a little more involved. So the third problem that Scott points out is solving a linear system of, of equations. Okay, the C47 uses a very similar approach to the DM42 for this, but it's maybe a little nicer because you can see the, see the matrices as you do this. So to solve a simultaneous system of linear equations, we go to the matrix function, so Shift-9, and on the F5 key, we select simultaneous equations. First thing we have to do is enter the number of equations, and you have to enter the leading zero. In this case, there's two equations, so zero, two. Then we enter the three matrices, so matrix, matrix A. Okay, I'd already done this one, so the values are in there. Um, but we do three, and then right arrow, seven, right arrow, five, right arrow, minus four, so four negative, right arrow, and then we can exit. So matrix A is entered this way, and then matrix B, again, it's already been entered in there, so 27, right arrow, and then two, change sign, enter, right arrow, whatever we like, and then exit. And then we select matrix X, and this gives us the answer. So two and three are the answers for X and Y. Now, one annoyance for me is that I wanna put these two answers onto the stack. For whatever reason, I might need to use them for additional calculations. I think this right arrow function is meant to put them on the stack. It says item to be coded. So I guess that's a feature that's still coming. At least that's what I expect this arrow to do. Since this arrow doesn't do what I want, I'll exit out of this and show you how to get these numbers onto the stack. So the first thing we have to do is say that we're gonna index this matrix. So that's a shift F5 function. Um, and then we say which matrix. So the matrix on stack level X is the one I wanna index. Then I can recall elements. And when I enter this, when I say I wanna index this matrix, um, it'll automatically um, point to the first element in the matrix. So now I can recall the first element by doing a double shift F4. That recalls the two. And now I want, I want to recall the other element or other entry in the matrix. So I'm going to do an X exchange Y to get the stack, uh, to put this matrix back down where I want it. And now this is where it's a little annoying. I have to tell it what I want to index next. So we can use the down arrow in this menu and then we can increment the I, which is indexing the next element in the matrix. And then I can use the up arrow to return to where I was. And now again, it's a double shift on the F4, and it recalls the second element on the stack. Now these are not next to each other, so I'm gonna do X exchange Y, and then I'm gonna do a roll down to get that matrix off the stack. And here's my two answers now on the stack, X and Y values. I think that's a little annoying, I hope I really hope that that arrow function is going to do what I want, and it's just a feature that's still coming. All right, on to the last one. This one's even more involved yet. So let's go back to the home menu. Let's clear the stack. Here we're asked to do a summation of a function 
over a range of, well, a summation of a function. So the only way to do this on the DM42 as well as on the C47 is to write a program that implements this function. It's probably a really good skill to learn on these um, RPN calculators. It's a really good skill to learn how to key in a keystroke program. So we're going to do it. Um, it's probably not the easiest way to do it or the easiest yeah, easiest task, but it's not that hard either. So in order to create a new program, uh, you saw in my previous video, I already made one program. So if I, if I go to the execute key and select program, I have one program in my calculator. I got rid of all the others so that I'm in control of what's in my calculator. Uh, so I encourage you to do the same if you're really learning this from the very beginning. So let me exit out of this, but we are going to create a program. So to do that, we go shift program. And that's the program, the only program that already exists. Um, I want to enter a new program, so we need to go to the end of programming space. So that's a double shift to select the blue GTO or go to. And then the trick is to enter a period twice. And this tells the calculator, let's go to the end of programming space so I can enter my new program. Now we have to put a label on a program as the first step. I don't know if you have to, but I think it's strongly encouraged. So let's do the two shift and select label. And I'm just going to call this um, question four, or problem four for us. We could call it P4, Q4, whatever we like. Scott's video shows that whenever he's implementing a function like this, he likes to lead with a, with a period um, to differentiate from other programs that are doing maybe something other than a function. So I like that approach quite a lot, and I'm going to use it. So we select the alpha key. All right, and then if you look at the top of the screen, you can see the capital A indicating we're in alphanumeric entry mode. Um, if we press the shift key, two more times. One time we get lowercase instead of uppercase, and the second time we get to the numeric entry pad, and that's how I can select the period. All right, after selecting period, it goes back to capital A. So I'm just going to say Q4 for this because I'm working on problem four, question four. So I select the Q, which is on the eight key, and then I want to select four, which again is the alphanumeric, so I press the shift twice, and then I can select four. So I've labeled this now dot Q4, I can press enter. All right, now I need to program this function. So for this function, it's one over two raised to the n, and that whole quantity times n. I notice right away that I'm gonna need two n's to do this calculation. And the calling function is gonna pass me the value of n on the stack. So I know I have n available to me. I could either store n and then recall it, or I could just press enter in my program, which would copy n into the Y position of the stack as well as keep a copy on the X position. So I'm doing that. Now I have two ends on the stack. Now I'm gonna start working on this two raised to the end. So I need a two. Um, and right now I would use that, I wanna use that Y to the X function, but this will raise N to the two instead of two to the N. So I recognize I need to swap my two and my N. So I do this swap X and Y, and then I can use this function Y to the X that gives me two to the n, and then I can take one over this value, and that gives me one over two to the n. All right, now the last thing I need to do is multiply by n. n is on the stack already waiting for me to call it, so I can just press multiply, and I've now got one over two to the n times n, and I, I can end, end this program. So I see a lot of programs use return. I don't know if return is required, but I'm gonna use it, assuming it's a good practice. So to get the return, I'm using the yellow, um, programming function menu and return is on the F4 key. And now I'm going to exit and exit out of this. Now we could test this program and we should test this program to see if we implemented it right. So I'm going to put a value of three on the stack and I'm going to call this function that we just wrote. So I call it by going to this execute equation, select program, and then I select dot Q4. And it gives me an answer of 0.375. Let's check if that makes sense. So two raised to the n is two raised to the third power. That's eight. It's one over eight. And then it's times three or times n. So it's, this should be three over eight, three eighths. And that's what 0.375 is. So it looks like it works. So now let's clear the stack and let's find the summation. Let's now do the problem. So we push the start, stop, and step values onto the stack. So I want a start value of one, a stop value of 20, and a step value of one for the summation. And then we go to the summation, which is under the advance key. So we go to advance and summation of n is right here. 
and it says, which program do you want me to sum from one to 20 with a step of one? And I say program and I select Q4 and it loops through all the iterations and gives us the answer. Okay, so there's the four programs that the DM42 mm, doesn't do as well at as the C47. I would say for the, for the quadratic equation and cubic equation solvers, C47 just blows it out of the water. For linear system of equations, the C47 does a little better because I can see the matrix while I'm entering it, but I think we have a missing feature to take the answer, which is a vector, and put the vector results onto the stack. This would work with up to an eight by eight matrix or eight by eight um, system of linear equations. So certainly I would expect that to happen for any uh, linear equation solution up to an eight by eight um, system of equations. And then the summation, okay, similar to the DM42, we have to create a keystroke program, but on the DM42, I think Scott had to write a program then that he called, um, which then called his program that implemented the function. So the C47 is doing a little better here. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.